from Amatullah from New Jersey, USA. What are your views regarding the killing of the black American George Floyd by a white policeman a few days ago? What the sister is referring to is an incident that took place about 12 days ago on the 25th of May 2020 where a black American by the name of George Floyd he was killed in cold-blooded murder by a white American policeman in Municipalis in USA where the white policeman by the name of Derek Chauvin he put his knee on the throat of the black American George Floyd and when he screamed the black person black uh, black American George Floyd when he screamed please I cannot breathe he yet the white policeman continued putting pressure by his knee on the throat of the black man for more than eight minutes and he killed him in cold blood not only that there were three policemen who were colleagues of Derek Chauvin who were just watching silently this cold-blooded murder has created protest throughout USA and even outside USA and other countries regarding the racism and the black person was innocent the one of the only reason that he was killed was because he was a black person and the protest against the racism and oppression has gone nationwide throughout USA we Muslims as a whole we stand in solidarity and we completely support the black protests against the racism and oppression throughout the world the Muslims as a whole we are with the black people in this protest and this is completely against humanity and it is also against the teaching of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Hujurat chapter number 49 verse number 13 Ya ayyuhan nasu inna khalaqnaakum min zakrin wa unsa wa jannaakum shauma wa qaba ila li ta'arafu inna karmuk min the law yatkaakum inna la aliman khabeed O humankind we have created you from a single pair of male and female and have divided you into nations and tribes so that you may recognize each other not that you may despise each other and the most honored in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the sight of Almighty God, is the person who has taqwa. According to the verse of the glorious Quran, human beings have come from a single pair of male and female, from Adam and Eve. May peace be upon them both. And the humankind, Almighty God, has divided into nations and tribes so that they may recognize each other, not that they may despise each other. And in this verse, Allah says that one human being is not superior to another human being. Whether it be because of color of the skin, one human being is not superior to the other human being because of race, because of wealth, neither is he superior because of age, because of gender. The only criteria which makes one human being superior to the other, it is taqwa, it is God consciousness, it is piety, it is righteousness. So according to the verse of the Quran, all human beings are equal, whether they are black or white, yellow or brown, rich or poor, king or pauper. The only criteria that makes them superior is taqwa, it's God consciousness, it's piety, it is righteousness. And a beloved Prophet he said in his farewell pilgrimage, he said, O oh, humankind, you have been created from one pair of Adam and Eve. Peace be upon them both. And he said that no Arab is superior to a non-Arab. Neither is a non-Arab superior to an Arab. A white man is not superior to a black man. Neither is a black man superior to a white man. The only reason that differentiates them is taqwa. It is piety. It is God consciousness. It is righteousness. And our beloved poet Muhammad he was not a non-racist. Non-racist are those people who do not practice racism. But the Prophet was an anti-racist. The anti-racists, they fight against racism. 
the non-racist people don't fight against racism. So our beloved Prophet Muhammad was one of the first human beings who said this in his favorite pilgrimage that no Arab is a superior to a non-Arab. Neither is a white man superior to a black man, nor is a black man superior to a white man. He was one of the first human being who was very much against racism. He was an anti-racist. And you see that in several seerah, in several incidents of the seerah of the Prophet, of the life history of the Prophet. And we know that when the Prophet, peace be upon him, migrated to Medina, and when they built the mosque, he told Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, who was a black Abyssinian slave. He told him to give the azan, the call for prayer. Imagine, there were so many people, Arabs, of superior races, of, of high lineage, but he chose a black Abyssinian slave. Bilal, may Allah be pleased with him, to give the call for prayer. And similarly, when he did Fateh Makkah, when he came back to Makkah, and when he was victorious, he told the same person, the black Abyssinian chef, Hadith Bilal, may Allah be with him, to give the Adhan. He chose him in preference to all the other companions he had. There were many other Arabs of high lineage, coming from a royal family, many of the Sahabas, but he chose a black person. This shows that the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not differentiate between two human beings only because of color. And Allah says in the glorious Quran, Allah says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 135, that, Ya ayyuhal amanu, O you believe, stand out firmly for justice as witness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if it be against yourself, against your parents or your relatives whether it be rich or poor, Allah protects all. So this verse of the Quran says, when you stand out for justice, you should be firm, even if it be against yourself, even if that justice is against your parents, against your relative, whether it be rich or poor, standing for justice is of very high importance in Islam. Here, the color of a skin or the wealth of a person does not make you give a judgment in the person's favor. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Rum, chapter number 30, verse number 22, that amongst his signs, he has created the heavens and the earth. And he's created the variation in your languages and color. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made different people of different colors and have made them speak different languages so that you can recognize them. So that you may know their lineage. It is not to oppress one person or the other, but it is for recognition, so that you may recognize each other, not that you may despise each other. And Islam, besides being anti-racist, it practically demonstrates universal brotherhood in various aspects of life. And the best example I can give you is Hajj. In Islam, the fifth pillar of Islam is Hajj. Every Muslim who has the means and the health and the wealth to perform Hajj should at least perform Hajj, that is pilgrimage to Makkah and the surrounding areas in the month of Hajj, at least once in his lifetime. And here you find that millions of people from different parts of the world gather. It is the biggest annual gathering where about three to four million people gather in Makkah and the surrounding areas. And the men, they're dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth. You cannot make out the person standing next to you, whether he's a king or a pauper, whether he's rich or poor. And you find people from all over the world, from America, from Canada, from UK, from Saudi Arabia, from Pakistan, from India, as, as well as from Bangladesh, from Indonesia, from Malaysia, all over the world. Black, white, yellow, brown, rich, poor, dressed up in two pieces of unsewn cloth, white cloth. Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Here I am, O oh my Lord, here I am coming to the service of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only to worship him. It is the best example of universal brotherhood. And if you know the history of Malcolm X, his name was Malik Shabazz al-Hajj. When he went Hajj for the first time, I think it was somewhere in the 50s and 60s, that time the people were much less, he was shocked. When he performed Hajj, he was shocked. And he wrote in a letter, I can see tens of thousands of Muslims with blue-eyed blonde hair 
mixing with black people. This I could not imagine can be a reality in USA. And he was shocked and that made him change completely. And as you know, Malcolm X was one of, one of the greatest people live, who lived a few decades earlier who fought against racism, who fought against oppression. The other example that, the, that we Muslims have and which we demonstrate in our daily life is we offer five times Salah. When we offer five times Salah in congregation, in the mosque, when we stand for Salah, we Muslims, the men, they stand shoulder to shoulder and feet to feet. The person next to you, irrespective whether he's rich or poor, whether king or pauper, whether black or white, whether yellow or brown, when we Muslims stand for Salah, we stand shoulder to shoulder. We practically demonstrate universal brotherhood minimum five times a day in our life. Other people talk about universal brotherhood. We practically demonstrate it every day, five times a day in our daily life. And this example that we have is not seen in any other way of life, in any other society, in any other religion. Regarding the murder that was done by a white police officer in Minneapolis, Derek Chauvin, of a black American by the name of George Floyd, is to be condemned. It was not only it was not only racism, it was not only oppression, it was murder. And in Islam, murder is the second major sin. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 32, if any person kills any other human being, unless it be for murder or for corruption in the land, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. Allah says in the Quran, if any human being kills any other innocent human being, it is as though he has killed the whole of humanity. And this cold-blooded murder, we Muslims condemn. Furthermore, oppression is the 26th major sin in Islam. This is also prohibited. This is nothing but oppression and injustice. And injustice is also a major sin in Islam. We Muslims support the black community throughout the world. And the cry of George Floyd, please, I cannot breathe. Please don't kill me in the video recording when the white policeman is throttling him with his knee for more than eight minutes will remain in our mind. Will always come up whenever there is an act of racism or oppression done to any human being.